let's talk about how do you protect your invention outside of the United States? So for multinational invention protection, you're going to need to file patents outside of the United States. A United States patent only covers use, making, using, selling of your invention within the boundaries of the United States. Now, the provisions of the patent law also allow you to prevent others from making it in a country outside of the United States and then importing it into the United States. So you do have, so a United States patent does give you the ability to prevent others from importing your invention into the United States, but it doesn't give you any protection for people that are making, using, and selling your invention in other countries. In order to do that, you have to have a patent in the specific country in which you want to have patent protection. Each country has its own patent office and its own patent regime in which you would need to file a patent application and go through a patent prosecution procedure in that country's patent office, the same as you have to go through the patent prosecution procedure in the United States Patent and Trademark Office. But there's a couple of things to know about so-called foreign filing. Let's get into that here. So in many cases, but not all, you're going to file a patent application in the United States, and I'm referring to that as a primary patent application. So this is a timeline going out from the date X, which would be the date that you filed your United States patent application. Now, in another video, I talk about provisional patent applications, and that's important to understand in conjunction with this. And so I recommend when you get a chance, take a look at my video on provisional patent applications here. The reason I bring up provisional patent applications is that if you were to file a provisional patent application and then later file a utility patent application, this date X is going to be dependent on the date you filed the provisional application because that's your earliest priority date. When you're talking about foreign filing, you're going to have to know what your earliest priority date is. That date is going to determine the one year deadline to file corresponding foreign applications outside of the United States. If you filed your utility application and that application didn't claim priority to any provisionals, then the filing date of the utility application is going to be what's used to determine the one-year deadline. Now, why is there a one-year deadline? The United States has entered into treaties with other countries so that those countries will provide similar patent rights to what we provide in the U.S. and vice versa. One of the advantages we have from the United States being a member of these treaties is we can get the same filing date as our U.S. application if we go and file the same application in other countries that are signatories to those treaties. So there's really only two treaties that you need to be aware of with respect to filing in other countries. The first one is what's referred to as the Paris Convention. So the Paris Convention allows you to file within one year of the filing date of your U.S. application in another country, and that country will give you the benefit of the filing date of what I'm calling the primary patent application. So for example, if you file a U.S. application on March 3rd, and then you file under the Paris Convention in Canada before March 3rd of the following year, Canada would give you the early March 3rd date, the original filing date that was granted to your United States patent application. And so when the Canadian Patent Office examines your patent claims, if there are any patent applications for the same subject matter filed after your United States filing date, but before the Canadian application filing date, the Canadian Patent Office would treat that as not being prior art because it was filed after your primary United States patent application filing date. So the other treaty to be aware of is the Patent Cooperation Treaty. The Patent Cooperation Treaty 
still uses as its basis the idea of the Paris Convention, which is that you have one year to file your patent application in other countries. You have one year from the priority date of your earlier filed primary patent application to file what I'm calling secondary patent applications in other countries in order for you to get the filing date of the primary patent application. The, the difference between filing under the Paris Convention and filing under the Patent Cooperation Treaty is that when you file under the Paris Convention, you're filing directly into the Foreign Patent Office where you want to prosecute your patent. And so from that standpoint, that patent office is going to treat your patent application as a new patent application they're receiving, and they're going to start processing it. Now, some countries are a little bit different from the United States Patent and Trademark Office and the USPTO. In most cases, when you file your utility patent application, you're going to pay what's called the examination fee immediately so that the patent office will assign it to an examiner and an art unit as soon as possible, and they'll examine your claims and you can get an office action. In many other countries, that doesn't happen automatically and you have to file a later request for examination and then pay the fee at a later date. In some cases, you can pay it earlier. In some cases, you pay it at a later date, but that's a question for another video. Now, one of the advantages of filing under the Patent Cooperation Treaty is that almost all countries in the world are signatories of the Patent Cooperation Treaty. And the benefit that you get when filing a Patent Cooperation Treaty application is that you don't have to file directly in any specific country until 30 months, generally 30 months from the priority date. So if your utility application was filed on date X and it was not claiming priority to any provisional or other application, so that X is the earliest priority date, then the PCT has to be filed one year from date X, but you get 30 months from the date X to file in the various countries that you decide to want to file in. So one of the advantages of that is, let's say that you're not sure yet what countries you want to file other applications in. So you've got a 30-month window from your priority date to think about that, consider the business implications of it, and to make a decision. There's also, of course, a cost implication because in every country where you file a patent application, you have to pay that country's patent office filing fees, and you have to have a local counsel that's going to file the patent application because your U.S. patent attorney isn't authorized to practice directly in those other countries and needs to engage foreign counsel and interact with them in terms of getting the filing and getting office action responses filed and so on and so forth. So there's an additional cost to foreign filing and we can discuss that in another video. But the main takeaways here is that if you want to get protection of your invention in other countries outside the United States, you need to file for patent protection in those countries. You need to go through the patent prosecution and obtain patents in any of the countries in which you want to have patent protection for. There are two ways to do that. One is to file directly within the one-year period of your primary U.S. application under the Paris Convention. And if you want to have a little bit more time to think about what countries you want to file in, you can file what's called an international application under the Patent Cooperation Treaty, the PCT, and then have 30 months from your priority date to determine what countries, what specific countries you want to file patent applications in. So that allows you to defer the cost of foreign filing, gives you some more time to strategize about what countries you want to file in, and so on.